This is like watching two of my children fight. Uh, I, I really like both of these teams a ton. You are looking live at VSIN Prime Time. Live from the Circus Sportsbook in downtown Las Vegas, here is Tim Murray and Jonathan Von Tobel. Let's go to Creighton, Tennessee. Uh, this game, if you like the favorite, you can get two and a half out there at DraftKings, or excuse me, at Circa. Uh, money line at minus 145 at a couple different spots. If you do like the dog in Creighton, you can catch the three here with the Blue Jays. I think you and I are aligned similarly in this one. Haven't gotten to the window yet, but your thoughts on Creighton and Tennessee. This will be the evening affair on Friday in the Midwest region. Uh, this is like watching two of my children fight. Uh, I, I really like both of these teams a ton. Uh, for Tennessee, as we've kind of alluded to here on this program between you and I, when you're talking about being like-minded, I, I think comes into this a little undervalued. You know, everybody who Rick Barnes, um, it's a really good team. They're, they're one of they're the third best defensive team in the country, have limited their opponents to less than 0.9 points per possession on the season. And in these games in the tournament, have done just that yet again. I know the shot quality metrics, I think, point, uh, painted a picture of a, a much wider margin of victory yes. for them mm-hmm. against, against Texas. Against Oregon. Or, oh, sorry. Yeah, against yeah. Texas. Um, and for Creighton, they're a team that, again, and they're a small underdog. But, Tim, when you're an underdog, as we're going to talk to Jack Golke about, right, what do you do? You up the variance. Slow-paced team, shoots a lot of threes. Much better shooting team than Tennessee. I, I really like what the Blue Jays bring to the table. So I'm very conflicted uh, on this matchup because I'm sitting on the sidelines right now. But I ultimately think that if you were to say, okay, bet something here, what's it going to be? I'm going to believe in Tennessee and their ability to play defense, really defend the perimeter extremely well, uh, ranked 29th in the country in opponent three-point shooting, don't give up a ton of open looks, give up nearly nothing inside within four feet or in the restricted area. It's absolutely incredible what they can do there while also being able to play with tempo, speed Creighton up, and I think get this thing done. I think it's going to be pretty similar to what we saw against Texas, but I think that Creighton's going to win, or should we lose, Freudian slip, a hard-fought battle here against Tennessee. So Nothing you, enough to bet it, though, too, by the way. So you brought this up, and I think it's it's worth discussing. And, you know, we like to look at all angles, right? So shot quality is not the gospel, Ken Palm, Bart Torvig, but I like to bring it up just as a discussion. I was on Oregon on Saturday. Not super thrilled about how that game unfolded in the double overtime period, but you look at shot quality, you mentioned the margin of Texas and Tennessee being larger. Believe it or not, shot quality had Creighton winning 94-78 to in that game because Creighton, who is a very good three-point shooting team, ended up hitting some big-time threes in that second overtime period, but all in all, they actually shot below what they normally shoot. They shot a ton of threes against Oregon, and I felt like they were getting good looks but they went 15 to 39, which is still 39%, but they got hot a little bit late in that game. And I think, you know, the overtime period, double overtime period helped them out. But it felt like if you were on the Creighton side throughout that game, you're like, they're missing wide open jumpers. They never miss this. So that is fair. You look at Tennessee. We talk about variance. Tennessee, what did they do against Texas? They were putrid from three. Three of 25. Now, as you alluded to, Creighton is a better three-point shooting team than Tennessee. Tennessee's not that bad. Three of 25? Dalton can, uh, excuse me, Dalton Connect. I almost called him Dalton Kincaid. Dalton Connect is much better at shooting threes than what we saw. And they won. And I think that's something that needs to be pointed out. Like Houston, who I'm going to back in the Sweet 16, almost blew it to Texas A&M. Probably should have lost. Shot quality said they lost the game. But they found a way to win. And I think both Texas, or excuse me, Tennessee and Houston, in my opinion, kind of overcame their clunker and didn't get eliminated. Who didn't overcome that? Baylor, Auburn, you know, those teams, they're not playing anymore. If they played those games again, would Auburn beat Yale? Yeah, I think so. Would Baylor beat Clemson? I think so. But guess what? They didn't. Tennessee and Houston both figured out ways to win those games with kind of bizarre circumstances going against them. I think you get a better performance. And I do wonder... From the Creighton standpoint, I've called them out on on toughness a bunch. They get that big win against UConn. They hit every potential three pointer. I think when you ratchet up this defense, when you look at you know Jonas Adu down low against uh, a Kalkbrenner, when you look at Zakai Ziegler, if he's going up against Stephen Ashworth, I think that's a decent size advantage for Tennessee. 
Yeah, I think I'd agree with all those. Do we get a Kalkbrenner blocked three and transition attempt again? That's the that's a real question. <laughs> that dude's Look. arms are so damn long. It is he. I, I'll give this Ryan Kalkbrenner. He he's seven one. He gets out really quickly he on does. shots. He does a and they don't foul. And that's the thing too is they are elite at avoiding fouls. That was the interesting thing about the Oregon game is they got in the bonus pretty quickly for their standards. Like there was like five or six minutes to go, yep. uh, and they were in the bonus.